Hello, it's Ashley here from Paper and Twine and um, come on to do some art with a glass of wine. So join me, if it's a decent hour of the day of course, if it's breakfast you don't want to be having wine, although I am led to believe that wine's quite nice on cornflakes. No, no, I'm only joking, ignore me. Oh. So uh, Mr Paper and Twine is cooking dinner and I thought I'd just come on and do this. So it is Woolly Steph's Art Club and the prompt for this fortnight is floral. And when I saw this rubber stamp by Julie Hickey, I thought, oh, that could be quite nice for my art journal page. Um, now, Julie Hickey stamps are usually really, really lovely to work with. But I've had a bit of a mare. Um, I've stamped the whole image on... Um, cardstock and I'm not happy with the results um yeah I've tried several times as you can see using my stamp platform and this is smudged and moved I don't know what was going on there um when I stamped several times I don't know whether it's because it's quite a big stamp and it's brand new and sometimes when they're new out of the packet they're a bit sticky they have a little bit of a residue on I don't know but um, I persevered and I got an image and I've cut down a portion uh, that is three and a quarter inches square. And we're just going to sit and paint it with um, some brushos as watercolours. I've got this little section left which um, I shall use as a tag or something. Um, but I've heat embossed in clear ink. Uh, because we're going to do some watercolouring. I've got a size zero paintbrush, uh, which I'm liking. I've got an acrylic block and I've got my brushos. Um, and we're just going to sit and have a chat and a little paint. Now, one of the colours that I really like is lime green. So I'm going to try and find my lime green. Just bear with, bear with. I've got two oranges in here. Does anybody want an orange brush? Oh, there's lime green. So um, I'm going to just tap a little bit on my block. That's probably more than enough. And put a little drop of water from my spray bottle. I've got some kitchen roll on hand to clean my brush. And I'm just going to make a watercolour and it's as simple as that. I love brushos, I absolutely love brushos. Obviously if you're doing the smooching and smooshing technique or um, the acrylic block technique, um, you get different pigments in these paints. So you get little splotches of colour and this is quite um, quite concentrated here. I'm going to add some more water and get a paler green. So if you're on a budget and you can't afford to buy a load of brushos at once, I think Lavinia sends, sells them separately and I think they're two pounds each, I'm not sure. Just by using more water, obviously you get paler colours. The less water and more pigment you use, the deeper the colour you get. Now I'm going to leave the background white for a pop of colour, but can you see we've got quite a dark green there and a paler green here. And the reason I've heat embossed this is it helps prevent bleeding. So that is that. Have we got any more leaves? Yes, we've got some leaves there. Now I think I might go in with leaf green. Now what I should have here is a load of um, scrap card to make some smooshy backgrounds. So I'm just going to get some. Hold on. So it's not far away from me. I've got my folder of white scraps and uh, we're just going to create some little smooshy backgrounds because we don't want to waste this and we might as well do two processes in one 
so there we go we'll just set that aside we might use a bit more um, or a different color in a minute so I'm going to just wipe my acrylic block clean and I'm knocking you now um, I like leaf green as a color and I think we might do these leaf green here uh, I don't know whether it's in this one or it's in the other box I need to come up with a little way of um, labeling the tops of my bottles I suppose I could just write on with a fine sharpie pen couldn't I um, but I was going to go to the bother of like watercoloring um, little circles and sticking them on and then punching a hole through them emerald green I've just found I don't want emerald green I don't think leaf green there we go now I'm not worrying about cleaning my brush because green is green is green uh, can you see a little bit of pigment on there and a little bit of water so this should be a darker green this leaf green yeah so I like that and um, yeah because I've heat embossed it does help keep the colour in line it does sometimes go over the edge it's not foolproof but um, now is that a bit of a leaf there yes it is now I'm going to add a little bit more pigment and get oh look can you see how we've got a completely different colour there it's because it's got different pigments with it in it so that's kind of like an olivey green but I like that um we've got a little bit of leaf here and a little bit of powder goes such a long way and I think these are incredible value for money I really do um you know and if you get clever with how you mix them you get so many colors this is really fine here love my brushes and of course the way that um, a lot of people use them is they sprinkle them on their craft mat or their glass mat spray with water to activate them and can you see we've got quite an olivey greeny color going on there in contrast with this bright green here loving that loving that I'm just going to give that a little bit of a spritz and we're going to layer up with our lime green here um, let's smoosh this way there's a little bit of blue going on there liking that liking the uh, little splodges if I'd let that dry naturally I'd have got you know better um, pigmentation I am going to clean my brush now just by spraying some water into some kitchen towel and just doing that because I'm too lazy to get up and wash my brush just going to put a little bit of water on my block and continue blotting that out a little bit more and that should be fine now now I've noticed a little heart here and I think we will have this this way up so the heart is that way and I have got a colour called alizarin crimson and I want to demonstrate to you just how many shades you can get out of this one colour providing I can find it of course uh, brilliant red I don't want that lemon might be useful for some of these flowers actually uh white don't want that purple i don't want that yellow ochre i don't want that black dark brown olive green it must be in this one this could be it here yes alizarin crimson so i'm gonna put 
Okay, I've got quite a bit on there and a little splodge of water. This is why I like using acrylic blocks because to me, you've got more control than if you're using a palette. I don't know, I just, I just like it. It's something I've done for a very long time. So I've got a very deep red here. Loving that, really liking that. And these are a joy to colour in actually. And I'm going to add a big splodge of water there and take some of this over here and pull the colour out and I'm going to start colouring. So let's try this flower here. So I've got a much paler pink. Can you see the difference? Um, I'm just going to go in and make this a little bit darker. This is all just one colour. So I've got a really deep red there, a paler kind of fuchsia pink here and just add a bit more water here I want to draw that out I mean I suppose I could use a water brush to blend that colour out and just come in here add a bit more detail there um, and then this one here, we're going to go very, very pale pink. I had got quite a lot of pigment on my brush, so it's not as pale a pink as I would have liked. So we're getting there. I've been asked to do a feature for Creative Stamping magazine on how to use pigment powders and uh, using different techniques. Um, this is one of the things that I kind of highlighted. If they publish it, of course, <laughs> they might not publish it. But can you see, we've got three distinct colours from one pigment powder. It's not rocket science, I'm sure you all knew this. I'm gonna clean my brush and see if I can get an even paler pink for this daisy here. Lovely. Very pale pink there. I'll just blot that so you can see. Can you see how pale that pink is there compared to the deep red that we started with, the more of a fuchsia pink here, and then kind of like a mid pink there. Love it. Let's find a little bit of um, card to smoosh on. As, um, obviously I create little card images with these. So, turn that upside down I'm just letting all the excess drip off because I don't necessarily want lots of pigment there we go and actually dabbing with a kitchen towel adds a little bit of texture which is quite nice so that's why I'm calling this my acrylic block kissing technique because I am just kissing the card with the um, acrylic block Let's get this pink out. What colour should we go for next? I'm thinking a little bit of yellow and orange. What are we thinking? Now I've got this little area here. Um, what have I got? Yellow, Prussian blue, brilliant red, dark brown, olive green. I can't find orange now and I've got two oranges. <laughs> Is this an orange? Yes. And one has fallen over. You don't want them to fall over because uh, you don't want to waste that pigment. So I'm putting quite a bit of orange on here. Orange 
change the colour. I don't use enough, actually. I really like it. Look at that. You can't see because it's out of shot. Look at that loveliness there. Like a little bowl of marmalade. Now, um, I think I'm going to do the centres of this flower orange. And then the little daisies, um, we will perhaps do in yellow. Because daisies should be yellow, shouldn't they? So using hardly anything, I've put far too much pigment on this block for the amount um, of colour that I need. There, that's that. Um, now, I think I want a pale orange for these petals here. Um, maybe too pale. Tell you what, I'm quite hungry now. Dinner is smelling very nice. I mean, obviously, if you're a colourist, I wouldn't uh, say that I'm a colourist. You could get lots of shading going on here. But it is so therapeutic colouring in. And I haven't done any, any colouring in in my colouring in books for ages. Been too busy. Now, I wonder whether we should do a really pale yellow around the edge or um, a different colour altogether. I think I'm going to keep it as is. And what I might do here, this little fine area, I might colour in black with a fine liner. Um, Mm. I'm going to do this area here orange I think just for a little bit of kind of um, not symmetry that's not the right word but um, just to get a little bit more yellow uh, orange on the page and I think I'm going to do this flower here orange Okay, so uh, let's bring in my card and smoosh this orange on. So I've got some little speckles going on there. Give this a clean. Might need another piece of kitchen paper in a minute. The only thing about brushes that I find really annoying is that they do, well, for me, they might not for you, but for me, they really stain your fingers. Okay, so um, these little daisies here I'm going to do in yellow. I'm quite a concentrated yellow. So I don't want a lot of water. I'm just literally dipping my brush in the water but I can see that that's a little bit too orangey it's too close to the orange that I've got so maybe I should use lemon or oh, actually what I might do is look at lemon for the outside of this big flower here okay that's nice That yellow is looking a little bit orange. Maybe I should have cleaned my brush a little bit more. Let's just blot that. Oh, you see, that's better. I've got another one here. And I'm going to blot again. Yes, I like that. And this one here. I do admire those people who can really, really paint. I just, oh, I'd love to be able to. Um, 
and people who can colour with alcohol markers and get all the blending. That again I really like. So we've got a quite a pale yellow there. I'm going to put this on top of or close to the orange. So we've got a little bit of something else going on. And I can make some really nice little cards with these. They'll be perfect for nice little inky doodles, birds and flowers and things. Now, uh, I think I'm going to just bring in another piece of kitchen paper because that one is sodden and just clean my brush. And I'm going to try and find lemon. I don't think I've used lemon before. Oh, it's going to be in the other box, isn't it? Lemon, where are you? Did I get you out already? Leaf green, lime green. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> Might be time for a slurp of wine. Now, I don't know whether it's because my holes aren't big enough, but some of these don't seem to want to come out. Let's poke a, another hole in. I don't think I've ever used lemon. Oh, right. Let's try. There we go. That's better, isn't it? Slurp of wine. Hope you've all got something nice to drink. Mm. I can't believe it's almost September. Where has this year gone? I really do not know where this year has gone. This looks quite a nice colour. Let's see how we get on with this round here. Well, that's nice because it's a little bit different from the yellow that we used. Let's put a little bit more pigment in, actually. A little bit more water, just a touch. That's nice. And we just come in and do this. Now, to me, this is more of a yellow than the yellow was. To me, the yellow is more lemon. Maybe it's because I blotted it. But I was worried it was a bit too much like the orange. And obviously, um, I will leave a link to Steph's channel. Anybody can join in the art um, journal prompts. They're once a fortnight on the 15th and the 1st of the month and if you click on the hashtag you will see everybody else that has used the hashtag and has uploaded a project. I like this lemon yellow. Now I need to think about this big flower. I'm thinking blue but I'm not sure There aren't actually that many blue flowers in nature. You don't get blue roses, do you? Unless they're dyed. I say there aren't that many blue flowers. What are you talking about, Actually, That's utter drivel. Utter, utter drivel. You've got forget-me-nots. They're blue. There, that's nice. Now, um... Can you see how pale that pink is there? Next to that bright red. You can't because I've come in too close. There, look. This looks white on camera, but it's actually very, very pale pink. Right. Let's see if this lemon looks nice with the yellow and the orange. While I think about what... Oh, little speckles there. I like those. While I think about what colour, I'm going to do this large flower we've been here a long time you're very patient if you're still here um yeah i'm thinking like a turquoisey blue with perhaps a little bit of cobalt blue um starting in 
in the centre and working out or ultramarine um i do like my ultramarine no okay this is what we're going to do i don't i'm not worried about having yellow on my brush because i'm using such a dark color that was emerald green you don't want that ashley oh dear me let's put emerald green away i don't need leaf green anymore and i don't need lemon anymore let's move the wine out of the way and i don't need alizarin crimson anymore i don't need orange anymore right cobalt blue see that doesn't want to come out either I had trouble with this earlier it's a shame they don't have a little shape shaker cap on these actually uh, like some of the cosmic shimmer powders do look at that love that color isn't that just beautiful and you can see all the different coloured pigments in there this has got a little bit of purple in it i think so i'm going to aim to be a bit arty now and kind of paint down the middle of each petal like so hashtag not an artist by any stretch of the imagination although <laughs> the last time i worked in a secondary school they did have me teaching art laugh 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 right need some more scrap oh let's try on this watercolor card that's in here need to use this up big spritz turn it upside down smoosh 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 wipe clean needs a lot of uh, cleaning on here now we're going to try and be arty. I don't know whether to use my water brush for this next bit. Let's, because we've got quite a big area, um, let's use our water brush. So, need just a tiniest bit of turquoise. That might be too much. Coming in with water brush. Just check it's clean. Yep. And a lot of water. Even more water. I want quite a pale colour. And we're going to try and blend all this out. I say try because, you know, I'm not an artist at all. But um, because I'm using water here, it will activate the pigment that's on the page. And I should be able to pull it out. Come in with a bit more of this turquoise colour. Looks nice against the yellow. Yes, so, oh look, I've got a little bit of a splodge there. I don't think this is going to be my favourite page. Um, I don't know what is my favourite page out of what I've done actually I did like my steampunk page and my winter page actually I really like that and I must thank Steph for doing this because it has taken me out of my comfort zone and I'm trying things that I wouldn't normally try and um really enjoying seeing other people's projects got a bit of orange there there we go so you can see we've got a little bit of that dark cobalt blue coming through 
Now, let's find another piece of card, or should we do the little, let's do a bit of this turquoise on the green. That's nice. Well, I think it's nice anyway. Wipe that clean, we've nearly done. Bet you're really glad if you're still here that we're nearly done. Squeeze my water brush out. And I think I'm gonna give this a little heat dry. So um, just excuse the noise. Sorry about that. Okay, now I've got a little bit here. I think I'm going to introduce a little bit of purple and then call it a day. Uh, can we find purple? This is the question. Do you know the answer? don't recall having seen purple actually today there it is right acrylic block look you can hardly see it coming out but there's some there honestly there is let's put you in there so you don't get lost little squirt of water now the thing about the purple is it does have a lot of red in it you can actually see the red on the block now that I've uh, activated the color And that's quite a muddy purpley colour. Let's give the brush a clean actually. See it's coming out purple on my tissue now. Let's try a bit more purple. Yeah, it's very ready. Let's go with this here because that is quite purple there. And just very, very carefully going around these little thin lines. In, in the first lockdown, or actually it was when I was first diagnosed with um, cancer last year I did some painting by numbers and um, I put them from masterpiece by numbers I think they are and uh, it I got three for 40 pounds they were buy two get one free and I've done two of them and had them framed and they're lovely one is a Paris scene and one is uh, London with London buses and they're um, in our hall upstairs between Molly's bedroom and our bedroom and the third one I started to do is Route 66 with a car but it is so fine and the brushes that they provided weren't fine enough so I bought several of these off Amazon and they're a lovely lovely fine um, brush that I do enjoy using last little bit of card coming out don't want that that's too big just want a little scrap of that. oh no that's a tag oh dear i bet you're really glad you came and watched this video aren't you there's a lot of nice color on there though smooshing over that's really oh yes i'm liking the depth of color in that and just blotting it I'm liking that even more. Let's come in with another little layer and blot and a final layer and I'll leave it to dry naturally and we'll get that pooling hopefully. Right that is that. 
move that out of the way. Now, I don't think I want to do anything else to this. I'm not entirely happy with this. Whether I even upload this, I don't know. We'll have a look in the cold light of day. Um, but what I have got here, uh, this was, what did I say? Three and a quarter inches square. So I've got a black mat here that is three and three eighths of an inch. And I'm going to stick this on. Doesn't matter which way at this point because we're just matting and layering. But you know I like my little layers of black. Then I've gone ahead and I've cut um, a background out of my blue splodges um, and matted that on a four inch black card and that will sit on the four and a quarter or four and one eighth of an inch page in my book. And um, I think I want that that way up. Yes. So we just mat this on here. So the mat was, uh, the splodgy mat was a scrap from a project and uh, I just actually quite like the little iridescent splodges there with the black. Just make sure that is adhered down. So this is real time crafting folks. And there we have our finished journal page for August, end of August, which was floral. I might do a little bit more titivating in which case I'll come back and show you. Are you ready to see the finished article? Uh, not my favourite page, I don't think. Um, I, I wasn't intimidated by the prompt. And I am sorry this is such a long video. Um, but, you know, this is real-time crafting. So if that's your bag, hopefully you've enjoyed it. If not, perhaps you've watched me on, um, you know, 1.75 speed. I don't know. Mm. Wine's nearly gone. Dinner's nearly ready here we go so this is the first signature in my book which is really chunky um look a little pound pippin there i love him this was the steampunk page which i really enjoyed actually after uh, worrying about it quirky girl I've just stuck her in um i've waited ages for all these nouveau drops to dry and they are dry and very dimensional I quite like my quirky girl and here is my floral art page so i added floral out of my huge french english dictionary that woolly steph kindly gifted me for my birthday how appropriate that i've used it in her art journal prompt and uh, and then the centers of the flowers some of the flowers i've gone in and i've added some gold micro beads um when i'm using my micro beads i put them in a little shallow box so they don't run away and there was actually some glitter in there which is stuck to the page as well and i quite like that it kind of gives it a little bit of a lift and i've signed it so 30th of august 2021 and uh first of september will be the next prompt i'm really excited sorry it's a long video again everybody take care see you soon Bye now.